Hello my soccer universe, ahead of the 6th round, I'm still on vacation, so I'm shooting this well ahead of the game. 6th round, last we'll play Austria Lustenau, unfortunately I don't have a jersey of theirs, although I twice was about to get and then, yeah, for some reason or another. So, blank background has to do here. Now, uh, Austria Lustener, to me, will always be the pioneers from Vorarlberg. And let me explain in the sense that when I started out being a fan in the early 90s, in the first two divisions, as far as I remember, there was no team from Vorarlberg, which is the most westernmost province of Austria. It seemed like always a uh, football wilderness to me, <laughs> in a way, from a, you know, from a very young <laughs> age on. However, Austria Lustenau is the first Vorarlberg team that I saw in the uh, top Bundesliga and that made it exciting because uh, it was something exotic to, in a way. It also meant long away trips. But, beside my personal perspective, we talk about that a little, a little bit later, um, I truly think that with Austria Lustenau make getting into the Bundesliga after spending most of the history which goes all the way back to 1914 spending most of the history in the amateur ranks they came up they showed that it can work there and I think they are the ones um, that actually got the whole fall uh, football and fall back really kick-started to the point where I can remember at least um, three teams having made it to the top league uh, with the traditional Schwarzweiß Bregenz then actually folding. But with their rivals Altach and now Lustenau, they have established something. And there are many other teams from Vorarlberg now in the second league coming up, up, up there. I'm really wondering what's happening there. Because it was always more like Tyrol, their uh, neighbors to the east, still in West Austria. That seem to have more close, but now fallback, it's booming. Uh, I think it's probably also a little bit geography, you know, it's the Rhine Valley where many villages are just growing together in, I call it Megalopolis Fallberg. Uh, I don't think it's an official term, but it seems like there everything is so condensed together that, yeah, it's becoming a decentralized big city right there. So uh, that to me is what Austria Lustenau really represent. Uh, the most interesting part for me is just from a geographic point of view that uh, Austria Lustenau, their stadium is right next to the Rhine River uh, to the border uh, on, the, on the border to Switzerland. So when you watch the games from their stadium, since the um, one stand is so small, they put the camera there, that's the main stand and you see Switzerland in the background. So it uh, gives you a kind of in international feel right there as well. Uh, the club itself has had some successes. I mean, the titles have are mostly on a regional level. For instance, they won uh, nine times the Four Alberg uh, Championship. They won eight times the Cup uh, um, of of that region, and also reached uh, the Cup Final seven times. They also reached the Austrian Cup Final twice, being the first club from Four Alberg to do so. So again, they are pioneers. They're the pioneers from the West. Uh, of course, they won twice the second league um, and have now two their second stint in the Austrian Bundesliga. The first one lasted three years now. This one is in its second year. They, for most of the existence of me following them, which, you know, they came on my radar in 97, uh, it was more or less that they were a very good second league team that, yeah, when they were in the first league, uh, in the, in the, in the in Bundesliga, they did enrich the league because of being different. One thing that always puzzles me, the club's colors of Austria Lustner are green and white. Austria Vienna and most other teams in Austria that have the name Austria are purple and white because of Austria Vienna. Rapid Vienna, the big rival of Austria Vienna, is green and white. Why do we have a green and white Austria? This, uh, one, that's the one thing that does not lose, uh, see, seem right with them, but hey, so be it. Another interesting thing, when they came up in the league, there was a big focus made on their unique fans. In this, uh, they had, I think, the first fan village ahead of the stadium. You know where uh, the... 
fans could gather and exchange you know it's it's more like a, an event and then you go to the game afterwards um which is also again i think a part of their success story when they came up it was very very much they were the team from fallberg and we are flying the flag that has gone a little bit i still would claim that they may be overall the you know the most steady team maybe not the most successful team from fallberg because their rivals altar had a little bit more success overall in the league but this that the fan groups uh especially it was called via fallberger we from fallberg this was kind of the first fan group from there that came with professionalization and that was a real uh, big deal and it still holds up today and their fans then is always very very well filled i have to say although it is a small stadium As I said, uh, for most of the time, this club was in the lower leagues. Uh, we talked about the championship in the amateur level. They reached once the championship game of the amateur championship, uh, which was a pre-war championship, um, where they were then beaten by Krems, uh, but had some uh, good successes along that way. The most, I mean, their, two, their biggest achievement is probably that they really made it in, in the Bundesliga in 97 um, and then finished twice ninth in the 10 team leagues and did not get re relegated in the third uh, year they got in there. Their best finish though was now the eighth place from the last season. Pair this with the two, uh, two times reaching the cup final, losing to Reed, another village team that uh, we will not get a video this time at Tatanga, but that is probably the most successful village team in all of Austria. Uh, they lost that uh, that one in 2011 and, and in 2020 they lost big to Red Bull Salzburg. Of course, I mean everyone. <laughs> if Red Bull Salzburg is a cup cup final, you tend to lose heavily. So uh, that's not a blight on theirs, but uh, they had a good cup final run there as well. Currently, the club, I think this is the difficult second season for them now. And, you know, we have to see, I, I really like their approach. They have a partnership with uh, Clermont Foot, where they exchange players, uh, which uh, you see a lot of uh, French players in there, which I find very, very interesting. Um, and also, I think a, a, a player of theirs, uh, Ham, who is an Austrian national team player, also uh, made it to Clermont Foot with that partnership. So uh, they send a few players to uh, Lustra to get some experience and so on and back. Um, the, so the club itself is relatively st stably built. The only thing is they need a new stadium and they will start building, the, uh, redeveloping the current stadium, which was kind of the classic Austrian uh, state, state stadium that you find in every uh, town. You have the soccer pitch in the middle, then you have the track running around and there's a stand on one side and stand on, 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 on the other. What they did though is, I think it's also one of the first, is that they got closer. They put like, the, they said, okay, we don't need the track. Uh, let's get the fans at least behind the goal, make them stand with where the fan village was and get this closer there. So uh, that was also interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that new, new stadium. Uh, as I said, they have a rivalry with Altag, which is close by which are the two closest stadiums still in the Austrian Bundesliga. Now, I think now the two, the two lane stadiums are, are closer, but uh, the two stadiums are closer than the two big ones uh, in Vienna for Rapid and Austria. So that is interesting. Uh, now, uh, as for the rivalry with Lask, again, there is not much of a rivalry. However, there are some uh, interesting stories between those teams. I think Lask played Austria Lustner way more than they themselves would have hoped, uh, thanks to the extended stay in the second league in the early 2000s, where Austria Lustner for most of the time was the better team. The one thing with Austria Lustner is that, as you know, you were happy when you came, came, came up, and at that time Lask had actually some of the best players ever to come from Vollberg in the Weissenberg uh, Bearberger brothers uh, playing for, uh, for, for them. So there was a, I don't want to say friendship, but you know, uh, you looked with with uh, benevolence towards uh, a Vollberg team because of that. 
In addition, uh, we bought their main striker from uh, their uh, championship winning uh, season, Peter Pavlovsky, who was also very popular with Lusk fans. Unfortunately, his career did not go to the levels that we all have hoped for. But yeah, so that, 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 that's another one. But for me, Austria Lusna, especially the long away games, and this was way back when you had to travel by bus and, and, and so on, it is a long ride to get out there to the west and you drive mostly through Georgia, Germany, because through the Alps it's uh, even more daunting. And hence, away games at Austria Lusna were never that, that easy. You usually beat them at home, but away from home this was not so much. And of course, the last thing that I have to say about Austria Lusna, they will always be connected. That they are the first opponent that Lusk face in the new stadium. And they actually would have deserved at least a point out of that game. However, a fluke penalty gave Lusk the win in the 94th minute. So that I will always remember from there. <laughs> Ahead of the match, I think this is an opponent that you just have to beat honestly. Uh, if uh, Lusna are facing out this difficult second season uh, where it's not quite yet all that gelling and you have to see whether things are working out, um, you just have to beat them. That's uh, the expectation. I actually hope, because I think it's great what they're building for Alberg. In a way, I really hope that they, would, they can build on that, that there are two for Alberg teams. I think in the long run, I probably only one of them will survive, but that is not the interesting part there. In any case, that was my few cents on Austria Lusten, a slightly shorter video, but it makes sense because it's a much smaller team with not that much history. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know below what you think about Austria Lustena. Have you ever heard of them and so on? And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!